Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to the correct views. <clears throat> Sam I B. DeGangi reporting for the media speaks. Now I've got two cameras in two different places, so I'm looking at you and I'm looking at you. Um, I say that because those of you that have followed my Facebook uh, know that I am unfortunately suffering from vertigo. Never had it before in my life. No, it is not caused by my roller coaster riding or my, uh, my rock and roll lifestyle, as it were. It's just one of those things that happen. And, uh, you know, you can prove that. I mean, there are people that uh, ride roller coasters every day. If that's what their job is, is to run that coaster, they have to ride it every day. Um, I, I don't know what it is, people. I will say it's awful. Uh, um, I'm going to do a piece on it after I'm completely recovered from it. But basically, you wake up one day and you're not able to walk. It's one of the most frightening things I've ever been through. I had a brain scan. My brain is okay. I've never heard that before. Um, no, all jokes aside, um, my EKG was fine. My blood work was fine. My x-ray was fine. CAT scan, fine. I am a very, very lucky person. Um, ask uh, hemp oil girl. A lot of people don't get a simple diagnosis of a vertigo like I did. Uh, having said that, I, I will go this far. Uh, we'll, we'll bring the arch enemy down here until later. I will say this. We're seeing a lot of people coming down with a lot of illnesses. And I'll just cut right to the chase here. I'm very, very thankful for all of the love and uh, worry and uh, concern that I had. Because I was in the ER. I didn't know what was wrong. So now the goal is to get my coaster ass back on the roller coasters as soon as I am well. I am going to be on stage with my band. Um, I'm getting better. Uh, I'm still a little topsy-turvy when I, when I uh, walk around. But it's doing much better than it was. And uh, thank you for all of the concern. That's all I'm going to do about the vertigo until it's over. And then I'm going to do a whole piece on it. Because uh, it was, again, one of, the, uh, one of the most frightening experiences of my life. Um, finding that out was scary. Because, again, they didn't know what it was. All right, guys. I've been lately going over articles uh, and commentary pieces that I think didn't get the kind of attention that they were warranted when uh, they hit the press. And a lot of times you end up a little bit backlogged. For those of you that follow the show, uh, you remember spring cleaning. It was uh, me going through a lot of the articles that I just could not get to. Well, there are a number of these that are still around it that I've noticed in the time that I have taken a couple days off that are just getting older and older and older and I want to go over a few of them because I don't know how in the world these were not like shouted from the rooftop kinds of articles. Um, this is from Natural News. Internet businesses caught price gouging customers that visit high-end websites. Um, like I was talking about coasters a minute ago. Uh, Christelle and I who uh, did not do this video, so if it's all crooked, you can blame me. Uh, she's actually at work. Um, Christelle and I like to go to Cedar Point, which is considered a resort. We were looking for like little mom and pop no-tell motel kinds of places to stay at. And they never came up. It was always the big name motels that came up. And uh, one thing led to another, and we finally found, uh, through a tedious searching, uh, not through orbits or anything, uh, the Seacrest Motel. And uh, hello, Vicky, we love you at the Seacrest Motel. Um, they didn't come up on search engines. And I mentioned this. Why is it the little mom and pop motel? There's also the Colonial Motel up there. There's also the Koa. Why do those never come up? Well, and right here is why. What they're doing is they're using your searches and they're trying to get as much money out of you as possible. And one of the ways that they do that is to deliberately send you to the more expensive hotels and away from the smaller places. And um, there are uh, maybe once or twice a year, usually once a year, we'll stay at the Breakers, which is the very nice resort hotel up there. But usually we're not in our hotel. We are at the park, so why would you want an expensive hotel room? If the recent revelations about the National Security Agency's massive data collection and spying schemes on Americans have made you reconsider the state of your privacy, you may be shocked to learn that some online merchants are now using your personal data to rip you off when you shop online. According to news reports, it goes on, 
some internet businesses are actually tracking users' browsing histories and charging them more for goods and services if they visit high-end websites that sell expensive products. This was in The Guardian. Um, having your data passed around led you to be charged for more for an item, writes Charles Arthur for the Guardian.co.uk. If your browsing history shows that you visit high-end sites, some sites will increase prices. That's why plane fares can drop if you delete the cookie files in your browser. Aren't you glad you listened? To put it another way, some of the very same private data being collected by the occupying federal powers is also being collected, at least to some degree, by online businesses for the purpose of customizing the prices of products for individual users. This means that so-called rich folks, or even just people who visit websites that look rich, could be paying more than everybody else for the same products. Um, Orbitz has been exposed for charging Mac users more, so I guess uh, Mac users are said to have more money. Um, it goes on to say that regularly cleaning your cache, browsing in a privacy mode, and both of those things can save you money. You can avoid being taken advantage of. Uh, the simplest and most obvious way, it says, is to activate privacy mode. It's a function on your web browser, which will prevent websites from accessing and tracking your personal data. Uh, I use Start Page. You can also disable cookies from being stored and tracked on your websites that you visit, and at least regularly delete them from your system. Obviously, you're going to want to do so before you hop online. Um, also, it says it's best to use um, privacy tools like Disconnect, Adblock, Edge, Ghostery, and HTTPS everywhere. And it says you can find those online. You can also use search engines like XQuick, StartPage, and DuckDuckGo, and they do not collect personal data. There you go. I um, also want to go on to this story, the biggest oil discovery in 50 years, the economic collapse. This is June 20, uh, July 24th. How many of you remember I just did a huge story proving that man-made global warming is, in fact, a lie? Well, we're going to go into this here. Um, I wonder if they're going to uh, not go after this oil because oil is warming the planet. You'd have to have a pumpkin for a head to believe that. By Shazar Azad's hat. In a virtually uninhabitable section of South Australia, a discovery has been made which could rock the world. Some are calling it the biggest discovery of oil in 50 years. Earlier this year, a company called Link Energy, that's with a C, announced that tests had revealed that there was a minimum of 3.5 billion barrels of oil equivalent sitting under more than 65,000 square miles of land that it owns in the act the, uh, yeah, the Arkaringa Basin, but that is the minimum number. It has been projected that there could ultimately be up to 233 billion barrels of recoverable oil. If that turns out to be accurate, the oil sitting under the land is worth approximately $20 trillion and would be roughly equivalent to the total amount of oil sitting under the sands of Saudi Arabia. In essence, it would be a massive game changer. This is really good news. Um, it says, it would mean that Australia now has more black gold than the nations of Iran, Iraq, Canada, and Venezuela. And uh, most of those are not our friends. The closest town to this oil discovery, Cooper Pebby, is in the process of being totally transformed. It normally has about 1,700 inhabitants, but news of the discovery has drawn 20,000 additional people already, and real estate prices have gone skyrocketing. I'm happy to hear this. I really am. Um, this is some stuff he's listed in previous articles on nine points here. It is estimated that there are 19 billion barrels of recoverable oils in the tar sands of Utah. Um, back in 95, the U.S. Geological Survey told the American people that the back and shale formation in western North Dakota and eastern Montana only had 151 billions of oil, billion, million barrels of oil, Today, government officials are admitting that it holds 7.4 billion on the recoverable oil. So, the, the, the more signs that they're being lied to in order to hold back oil production. Uh, drill, baby, drill, as Sarah Palin said. Um, there are 86 billion barrels of recoverable oil in the outer continental shelf. There are 800 billion barrels of recoverable oil in Green River, Wyoming. 
1,442 trillion barrels overall in the U.S. The Institute of Energy and Research in the U.S. has 88 years supply of natural gas. Uh, and it goes on and on. I'm not going to read all that. Uh, it says Goldman Sachs is predicting that the U.S. will be the number one oil producing country by the year 2017. And that is good news. Drill, baby, drill. Get us out of these countries that we're entangling ourselves in. And uh, it will also help us get away from the one world government, which I'm sure does not make the uh, power mad elites very happy here. Um, our place in America now a military occupying force from the Rutherford Institute, John Whitehead. Um, basically, it talks about how we are getting more and more and more police presence in our cities and towns, even though a crime rate is going down. Uh, it says, despite the steady and the steady hue and cry by the government agencies about the need for more police, more sophisticated weaponry, and the difficulties of preserving the peace and maintaining security in our modern age, the reality is far different. Indeed, violent crime in America has been on a steady decline, and if current trends continue, Americans will finish the year 2013 experiencing the lowest murder rate in over a century. It says, despite this clear referendum of the fact that communities would be better served by smaller, demilitarized police forces, police agencies throughout the country are dramatically increasing in scope and size. Um, for example, it says that L.A. has reached a total of 10,000 officers. It takes its place alongside other cities boasting increasingly large police forces, including New York, 36,000, Chicago, 13,400. When considered in terms of cops per square mile, Los Angeles assigns 469 officers per square mile. Now guys, it doesn't take a brainchild to figure out that the thug mentality does not need an entire army to stop it. What we need is to take people who are guilty of violent crimes, keep them in jail longer, and take those who are modern, everyday potheads, uh, speeders, uh, people roped into DUIs when they were sober, uh, non-violent offenses, and hit them harder. And a lot of things that are illegal should, in fact, not be illegal at all. If we started clearing these kinds of things away from our jails, then we would be able to work on um, less police officers. What the trouble here is, is that they want more police officers so that they can have greater control over us, so that we can choose less of our own destiny. Because at some point, everything is illegal. Um, it says in 1980, there were roughly 3,000 SWAT team-style raids in the U.S. By 2011, that number had grown to 45,000 and has since swelled to 80,000 SWAT team raids per year. 80,000 people in the United States of America need the equivalent of a militarized army to come through their door. This is obviously not true. I don't care where you live. This is excessive and that's all there is to it, friends. It's excessive. Go to the article. It's tons of facts and numbers on it. it. cannot be overstated. We are turning into a police state. We are turning into a place where the government and the authorities control every aspect of our lives. And this is very, very important and cannot be overstated. Neither can the importance of going to the mediaspeaks.com and clicking on Bud K. It's the ad on the right. When you click on it, you will find a plethora of things. Survival items, novelty items, uh, zombie apocalypse items, swords, food, all kinds of really cool things. Go to Bud K, not just because what they have is some of the most unique merchandise you'll ever see, because it is, but also when you do so, it helps the media speaks. They, uh, they're, they're with us, they're on our page, they sell quality merchandise, and when you click on our page to buy it, it's like donating to us, too. So please do. That is how we grow. Uh, two more articles until we get away. We'll call this monster back up here real quick. For those of you that don't know, this creature here is uh, Naoto Khan. He was the Prime Minister of Japan. And, of course, you know, perfectly innocent. He's uh, not going to be found guilty of anything in terms of any of the problems in Fukushima. He could have never known, right? That's what we hear. Guys, um, search 2001 earthquake prediction. And I don't mean by people with tin hats. 
science, scientists have warned of a massive earthquake. They have warned of it hitting the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant, and they had warned of it before the earthquake. The reason these changes weren't made is it was going to cost too much to the bottom line of the nuclear industry. So they did this to the entire globe, and this man is about to walk. Um, this is like George Bush, you know, not, not guilty of anything here. From the RT, faultless in Fukushima, media says ex-Japan PM escapes blame over nuclear accident. Japanese prosecutors are unlikely to press charges against former Prime Minister Naoto Kan, as well as utility executives, over their handling of the 2011 Fukushima nuclear disaster, dealing a blow to citizens affected by the accident. Prosecutors have questioned Khan, who was Prime Minister at the time of the accident, as well as former TEPCO President Masataka Shizu, the, Ashi, the Ashahi newspaper reported uh, Friday. It says, um, the complaints were filed, as they should have been, <laughs> by citizens affected by the disaster. Um, this, it says a photo was taken on August 6, 2013, shows local government officials and nuclear experts inspecting a faulty uh, the, expect, <laughs> inspecting a facility to prevent seeping of contamination water into the Tokyo Electric Power's Fukushima Daini plant in Okua, Fukushima Prefecture. Another sign that they were warned about this ahead of time. Meanwhile, many of the individuals affected by the disaster, from local fishermen who lost revenue, to homeowners who are still unable to move back into their homes, are hoping to gain compensation for their suffering in the courts. Prosecutors, of course, however, concluded that it was difficult to prove that the accused could have been predicted, and that such a big earthquake or tsunami, as well as to establish a casual relationship between the nuclear disaster and death and injuries among the evacuees. Well, it was predicted. You search it online, I'm not making it up. It was known, it was warned about way ahead of time. When looking back at the accident, the problem was the preparations had not been made in advance. TEPCO's Internal Investigative Commission, led by company president Naomi Hiros, said in the statement, Could necessary measures have been taken with previous tsunami evacuations? It was, possible to the, it was possible to take action by applying more extensive safety measures, the commission admitted. The task force said that the energy giant was wary that efforts to better protect nuclear facilities from severe accidents such as earthquakes and tsunamis would spark anti-nuclear sediment, increase insurance costs, and ramp up the litigation procedures. In other words, the bottom line was more important than the safety. They had the science to predict the earthquake, and they did nothing to prepare for it in order to better the bottom line. That is why nuclear power needs to be eliminated, it needs to be shut down and never again brought to uh, the forefront, because everything we've seen from it has been the disaster that Albert Einstein himself had warned us about. And for those of you that don't know, he said that nuclear power was one hell of a way to boil a cup of water. Which is, of course, what, uh, it's what nuclear generation is. They, they heat up on through nuclear fusion water and then the steam turns to turbines and gives you energy. It gives you poison and death and cancer. Um, the, faster than the speed of light. New York Times, last thing I want to get to. A lot of this sounds like it's something that's never really going to get to us um, in terms of practicality. Like, everybody watching this will be long dead by the time the benefits of this come. However, it may not be the case. Let's remember, as I was talking about Einstein a minute ago, uh, let's remember that it was considered impossible to do a nuclear bomb, and then it was one scientist who was working with him that realized that they were sending positive neutron, positive elements and other positive elements, and it was repelling away. So what they did was took and used a uh, uh, neutron, which had no charge, and ran it in and got the explosion. So you could only be maybe one or two steps away from uh, science fiction becoming science fact. Having said that, I would not hold my breath. It's uh, Houston, beyond the security gate at the Johnson Space Center's 1960 Air Campus here, inside a two-story glass and concrete building with windowing corn, winding corridors, there is a floating laboratory. 
Harold G. White is a physicist and advanced propulsion engineer at NASA, beckoned toward a table full of equipment on a recent afternoon. A laser, a camera, some small mirrors, a ring made of ceramic capacitors, and a few other objects. It goes on, he and other NASA engineers have been designing and redesigning these instruments with the goal of using them to slightly wrap the trajectory of a photon, changing the distance it travels in a certain area, and then observing the change with a device called an, interfermi an, an, an interfermeter. Easy for me to say. So sensitive is their measuring equipment that it was picking up a myriad of earthly vibrations, including people walking nearby. So they recently moved into this lab, which floats atop a system of underground pneumatic piers, freeing it from seismic disturbances. Um, basically what they're doing are experiments in bending time and space. It says the theory involved a harnessing the expansion and contraction of space itself. Under Dr. Al Kerbier's hypno, uh, hypothesis, that's A-L-C-U-B-I-E-R-E-S, a ship still couldn't exceed the speed of light in a local region of space, but a theoretical propulsion system he sketched out manipulated space-time by generating a so-called warp bubble that would expand space on one side of the spacecraft and contract it on the other. A lot of that stuff looks good on paper, but when you try to imagine exactly how it's going to work, uh, you know, there's a lot of questions, but who knows? Uh, I do know this. Um, you couldn't travel straight that fast because little tiny particles of matter just floating around in space would blow your ship up at that speed. So, I mean, you'd have to find a way around that as well. This would be such one such way if you would take and take time and space and bend it around and then it would suddenly be here. You know what? That's easy to do when you're holding a bottle, but, you know, let, let's see it happen. It, it does say his, Dr. White's experiments to the early stages of the Manhattan Project were aimed at creating a very small nuclear reaction merely as proof that it could be done, and later on they ended up, like I said, um, making the atom bomb a reality. So, it is what it's worth. I, I think it's interesting to point to a lot of... I like to end with science because I think it's important to realize what could we do if we did things other than bomb Syria? And remember... I, I just did uh, work yesterday with D. Lake for Prez. I'll look up uh, uh, our latest work on Syria. What could we do if we were focusing our efforts on bettering humanity through science and travel and education uh, instead of finding new ways to murder each other based on what religion there we are? And that's why I like to end with scientific things like that. Friends, uh, Sam I.B. of The Correct Views signing off. Please go to TheMediaSpeaks.com and look up the work of Kyle Court D. Lake and myself. I've been churning out many articles. Again, I don't know how many of these I'm going to do because this is the first I've done and uh, since I found out I had her to go and I'm still a little wobbly. But it is going away and it will soon be gone. Your prayers would be greatly appreciated. I'm hoping to be one of those people that can go back to doing all of the things they did before they ever had it. Uh, thank you, friends, for listening to me. Good night, God bless, and don't forget Dana Mobley Christ at the Charity Connection. Good night, my live friends.